Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Kentucky airmen are returning home this morning from Senegal after helping in the fight against the Ebola virus. An urgent need during these cold days as Salvation Army needs winter clothing donations, especially for children. We'll tell you how you can help. Well, we're looking outside. Hey, we're not seeing any snow out and about. There's some good news for you. We still got the cold, though, and I'll show you how cold we are this morning coming up. Good morning from WKYT News. It's good to have you with us. Here we are Wednesday, so we're rolling right on through this very cold week. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. It is cold again. <laughs> again. And we are tracking Arctic air that continues to pour into the bluegrass this morning. And we could see record low temperatures today here in Lexington. Let's check in now with WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris for a first look at the forecast. Yeah, like I was just saying, we don't have any snow outside. No flurries, so there's some good news for you. We've uh, kind of got rid of those for now. Still the cold air last. There's first alert defender live radar. It looks pretty good. This does not. 14 degrees there in Lexington. We're at 18 in Richmond and Mount Sterling. So, yes, we are cold once again, and that's actually hitting a record already this morning. We will break that uh, in the hours to come. So, there's three records in a row. I mean, you're talking about in two days, three records. Yeah, there's some big time cold air for you. 37 degrees this afternoon, a better feel. It's not going to feel great. It'll still be chilly, uh, chilly but uh, it's much better than the 20s, that's for sure. Now, going in throughout the next several days, we'll get another cold front. Is that going to bring us more snow? I'll show you that forecast coming up. All right, we'll see you then. We thank you. Volunteers with the Salvation Army have been working long hours this week trying to help people stay warm. But they're running out of coats and gloves to give to those who need them, especially children. And they worry what might happen without help. WKYT's Jerrica Insko has that story. You've been outside, so you know just how cold it is already. Now imagine if you didn't have a coat, hat, or gloves. The Salvation Army is asking that you think of those without in these bitter temperatures. They've seen people suffer through some brutal winters in Lexington. The last year we had a really cold winter and there was a great need for warm winter items. In the past two weeks, that need has arrived early on their doorstep. We can see easily 50 people or more a day coming in for these items. And Major Deborah Ashcraft says they haven't been able to keep up with that demand. This year it seems like it's gotten cold really fast and a bit early. And at the Salvation Army we've had people coming in asking for winter coats. Moms coming in asking for snowsuits for their babies and we just haven't had those items on hand. Take a look around at the Salvation Army's clothing department. We have a lot of spring type jackets, but as far as winter coats, basically, this is what we have. You soon realize that the need for children, but we need a lot of winter, warm winter scarves, is everywhere you look. This is really what we have for hats, so we've got a couple of hats. The Salvation Army still is proof that the community cares, but this time around, we're really grateful for what we do have, but we clearly need a lot. Um, more items. Your donations are needed sooner than later. You can drop off clothing donations at the Salvation Army located here on Main Street. In Lexington, Jerrica Insko, WKYT. The Salvation Army's clothing store is open to the general public serving men, women, and children. Today will be another difficult day for anyone who has to work outside in this Arctic air. Construction workers that we talked with say as long as it isn't raining or snowing, they'll be working outdoors. They say they'll be packing on the extra layers. They're also taking frequent breaks and even use an outdoor heater. And some workers tell us they try not to think about the cold too much. When you keep busy out here, you adapt and, and your body, your body, uh, uh, adapts to it and you can work very easily. The Lexington Fire Department told us they bring in extra staff on winter weather days. That way firefighters can rotate shifts more easily and stay out of the cold as much as possible. Bertha County Schools are closed again today because the county's high school does not have heat. Workers are replacing boilers at Bertha County High School so the school hasn't had heat since last week. Yesterday, that, or, I'm sorry, on Monday, the school tried to use space heaters, but they did not help. So, Bertha County Schools canceled classes yesterday and today. Parents we talked to are not happy. 
We're tracking a crash out of Clark County this morning, and officials say the car could have rolled into a home. It happened around 1 a.m. off of Boonesboro Road. Emergency crews say a driver looked down while she was in her sedan, and then it crashed into a Columbia gas van. The car rolled down a hill into a mailbox, which may have stopped it from rolling farther. The driver was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. We're learning some new details this morning about a bank robbery here in Lexington. Police say 32 year old Robbie Wilcox was arrested yesterday shortly after robbing the central bank on Maple Leaf Drive. In an arrest citation, police say Wilcox confessed to one of his crimes. He is also charged with a robbery that occurred at the Advance America on Southland Drive on November 11th. In that case, police say he threw out his clothing to avoid being caught. Two people died yesterday in separate crashes just hours apart in Boyle County. The first one happened at about 2 o'clock on US 150 near Airport Road. The Boyle County Coroner's Office says 67 year old Harrison Harden of Stanford lost control of his car and flipped off the road. He later died at the hospital, but investigators say his 18 month old great grandson was strapped to a car seat and was not injured. Around three hours later, investigators say another driver lost control of his truck on Highway 300 and hit a tree. The coroner's office says a passenger, John Edwards, died at the scene. Investigators say his son was driving. He was taken to the hospital with unknown injuries. Tracking a shooting investigation in Lexington this morning, officers tell us that it happened around 5 o'clock yesterday evening in the middle of the street on Nelson Avenue. A victim with a minor injury to the shoulder showed up at Good Samaritan Hospital. Police say witnesses told them that several shots were fired. Police did find several shell casings in the street. Well, this morning we're tracking the investigation into a fire that forced a Lexington family from their home. It started at about 7:30 last night along North Limestone. No one was injured in the fire. The home did have some damage. The Red Cross was called in to help the family. Firefighters still trying to figure out exactly what caused this fire. The Kentucky Airmen are on their way home this morning, and we're, they're expected to arrive with, in Louisville within the hour. About 50 airmen will be returning in two separate trips from Descartes, Senegal. They were sent there to create a cargo processing hub to help support the fight against Ebola. Those airmen do not need to be undergoing any quarantine because they were in an Ebola-free place. Okay, we have an alert this morning for dog owners. Thieves could be targeting your pets. In the last week, investigators tell us that seven dogs have been stolen in Garrett County. And now they're wondering if it's part of a dog theft ring. WKYT's Garrett Weimer talks to the owner of one of the stolen dogs. Favorite toy lies ignored on the floor. It hasn't been chewed since Saturday. Uh, there's been lost sleep, you know, we've been crying, tears, you know, it's just like I have a child gone. But one year old Bruno, the boxer's owners, are convinced their other family member didn't just run off. Lost, stolen dog, cash reward. They think someone stole him. All the latches were off the kennel door and it was shut back. You know, it was just really suspicious. The door was shut back. Sadly, they're not the only ones here in the area going through this same thing. The director of the Garrett County Animal Shelter says she knows of seven full blooded dogs, almost all of them males, that have also turned up missing and they believe have been stolen. Uh, it tells me that probably being used as stud dogs, they can make money off puppies. They probably know where females are, lined up females. And males are a lot easier to sell than females. Now they're warning other dog owners please watch your dogs. I mean, they're going. Usually the missing times are early in the morning or late at night. It's never midday that we get a phone call. So you don't have to go through what they are. I want back. You want him back? Yeah, I know. I want back. In Garrett County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. If you have any information about the missing dogs, call the Garrett County Animal Shelter. We have the number on the screen. It'll also be on our website, WKYT.com. Well, the Salvation Army in Lexington needs your help in making its biggest fundraiser of the year a success. The annual Red Kettle Campaign is underway. The Salvation Army needs hundreds of volunteers to ring bells alongside those kettles throughout central Kentucky. This year, the Salvation Army hopes to raise $555,000 through the Red Kettle Campaign. When you stand out there ringing the bell in the cold, you can feel good that a child who is homeless will have a warm place to sleep tonight because of your sacrifice that you're making. You can also donate to the Kettle Campaign online, and you can find out how to do that or how to volunteer on WKYT.com.